So do you really need that overnight sleep study or polysomnogram that that doctor wants you to get? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski with Relax Health, and today the discussion is on whether or not you really need to get that overnight sleep study. Well, a polysomnogram or overnight sleep study is a definitive sleep test, usually to diagnose or treat obstructive sleep apnea. It involves a lot of wires, uh, electrodes on your scalp, your eyes, your chin, even potentially on your arms and legs, and then measurements of breathing through your nose and mouth and your heart and belts around your chest and belly to tell how often you're breathing and when you're breathing. And sleep physicians like myself can look at this study and determine whether or not you have certain sleep conditions, particularly obstructive sleep apnea. So it is an important test. The problem with the test and your doctor ordering the test is that it's the reason sleep centers make a ton of money is by ordering these tests because that's what the insurance reimburses. The insurance system does not really reimburse treatment of most sleep conditions like insomnia, restless leg syndrome, or disruption of the biological clock. But if a doctor orders a sleep study, they can make a lot of money on that because insurance tends to pay for procedures. So if there's this subconscious influence of money involved, when do you really need a sleep study? Well, let's go over the main reasons. So in obstructive sleep apnea, most people can be diagnosed by a less expensive and less cumbersome home sleep apnea test that's just a tube over the nose and maybe an oxygen sensor on the finger. Sometimes it's done by a wrist-worn device uh, with a sensor on the finger. But the home sleep apnea test doesn't profit the sleep center very much money, but for most people, it's effective in diagnosing obstructive sleep apnea. There would be a handful of cases where the overnight sleep study would be a better test. And that's in people with significant heart problems, particularly more moderate to severe heart failure. Also people with different lung conditions, people on oxygen or those with more moderate or worse COPD or other lung diseases. People who are morbidly obese beyond a BMI of 50 or greater would be at risk for a condition called hypoventilation, so the home sleep apnea test may not be the best. People with spinal cord injuries, particularly of the neck and upper back, can also have unusual forms of breathing and uh, those who are on very high doses of standard opioids like oxycodone or methadone or fentanyl might have some degree of low breathing or central sleep apnea and that would not be best diagnosed by a home sleep apnea test. Those who have already had a home sleep apnea test and it was either borderline or inconclusive for sleep apnea would thus warrant a polysomnogram or overnight sleep study. And then there are other sleep conditions, namely a dream enactment or people with suspected REM sleep behavior disorder or a, any type of parasomnia like sleepwalking, doing different behaviors in one sleep. That needs to be looked at through polysomnography and not a home sleep apnea test. Now, another type of overnight sleep study is called a CPAP or PAP titration study where you get all the wires and tubes and everything put on, but then you're tested on a, a CPAP or a PAP machine uh, for treatment of sleep disordered breathing, like sleep apnea. And most of the time this is unnecessary because of the technological advances in CPAP. There's an auto CPAP machine, but an auto CPAP machine can be used in most people without testing it in the sleep lab. But those for the same reasons as above that I had mentioned, would need a titration study to be tested for sleep apnea. Also people with central sleep apnea, people with hypoventilation or low oxygen, even on their home sleep apnea test, would also need a titration study. So those would be the reasons to have to be tested on a CPAP machine in a sleep lab overnight. What are some of the not so good reasons for doing this sleep study? I see this all the time. Well, I haven't had a sleep study in five years. Well, has anything changed in five years that would make the sleep study valuable? There usually aren't many good reasons. If you had sleep apnea five years ago, you probably have sleep apnea now unless you've lost significant weight. So if you've lost 
10, 20, 30, 40 pounds. That might not be enough, but if you've lost 100 pounds for some reason, maybe you should get another sleep study done to retest whether you have sleep apnea or not. But those who are doing well on CPAP, really, unless the insurance is requiring it, there's really no good reason to have a sleep study every five years unless there's a really good medical reason. Another potential reason would be somebody who's on a PAP machine, if the data is, are showing a lot of breathing episodes, particularly central sleep apnea, that could be a good reason to get retested. But most of the reasons are not good if it, they involve, well, it's been a long time. Insomnia. Insomnia is the difficulty in falling asleep and staying asleep. So unless you have really, really severe untreated sleep apnea, your difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep is not due to sleep apnea. You may still have sleep apnea, but you should not be getting an overnight sleep study to fix falling asleep and staying asleep. That involves a discussion with a sleep professional or even treatment such as cognitive and behavioral therapy. It really, none of that relies on an overnight sleep study. And another example is restless leg syndrome. An overnight sleep study can tell if someone's legs are moving, called periodic limb movements in sleep. But those periodic limb movements have almost nothing to do with restless leg syndrome. Though a lot of people with restless leg syndrome have periodic limb movements, 40% of the time periodic limb movements are due to restless leg syndrome. That means 60% of the time they have nothing to do with restless leg syndrome. In fact, if you look up the diagnostic criteria for restless leg syndrome, you won't see any lab test or sleep study on the list. It's a clinical diagnosis. It's made by a doctor talking to a patient. So if you're getting a sleep study for restless leg syndrome, you have to question why you would need one because I don't really see a reason for that. So just to summarize, there are many good reasons to have an overnight sleep study, some of which I've gone over today, but just be careful that anytime a physician orders a test where they're set to profit off of that test, you have to think twice as to whether it's really medical, medically necessary or it's really sort of, well, we can get away with doing it and we'll make some money from your insurance on top of that. Many people have Pay, are paying out of pocket, have co-insurance or high deductible insurance plans. And if you get stuck with several thousand dollars of a sleep study, that's a lot you might be paying for something that maybe you didn't need from a medical standpoint. As always, uh, this video is for medical information only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine or sleep care. All decisions regarding sleep studies or any other sleep issue should be under a medical licensed professional supervision. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.